Hi guys, this is Hardik Nahata here from India. I hope you guys are doing good. Firstly, I'd like to thank Jiyashin for this amazing opportunity. And I'd like to thank to actually conduct these uh, developer open mic nights because not uh, everywhere this happens. You know, we have stand up comics doing stand ups on open mics, but nothing but developers because our content is not really relatable to everyone. So people who are actually you know, interested into this or other developers can only relate to it. So it gives us a chance to speak about what stuff we are doing around. So without further ado, let's get started. So today we'll be talking about how we can use natural language processing to generate questions from any given text, right? So as uh, Jasin has already told about me a bit, I'd like to keep it short. So these are some, some of the experience listed. I've worked at Winwire Technologies. I've worked in hybrid app development. And also in 2019, I was working as a research assistant at Nanyang Technological University. And post that, I graduated last year in, with a bachelor's in computer science. And I've been working as a machine learning engineer at Koi Leader. And now the the current uh, company where I'm working at is called Aspector Technologies. And we're working in EdTech. So let's get started. So I want you to pay attention to the content on the left side. There's a small paragraph about Asia over here. And this is kind of the input to our uh, solution or model. And on the right side, you see, we have a multiple choice question generated from this content. Now the keyword here or the answer here to the question above that dash is separated from Europe by the Ural Mountains on the West. The answer is Asia. And that's pretty easy to actually pick from the given content on the left side because we can see that. But what about the other options? How do we come up with these wrong options, which are you know uh, possible answers, but also not very different from what is actually to be shown? So this is a key point, And that's what we're trying to solve here. And let's see how it happens. First, I'd like to take you to the pipeline flow a bit. And then we can go into it deeper. So we start with the input text over here, a block of text. And this is sent to text summarization and keyword extraction. OK, now the boxes in blue shows what activity is happening on the input. And the box in black shows what kind of uh, uh, library or model we are using to do that. OK, so the text summarization happens with Google Bird model served by Hugging Face. And the keyword extraction happens with PKE, that is Python key phrase extraction. Now, once we get the summarized text that is sent for sentence tokenization, basically we're trying to take out the sentences from the summarized text. And also the keywords which are received are sent for sentence mapping with keywords. I know this sounds a bit complex, but just stick with me through the pipeline. When we delve into it, you'll, you'll, you'll find it more easier to understand. So the sentences generated from the tokenization and the keywords extracted are sent for sentence mapping to flash text. Once we get these sentences and their respective keywords, these are sent for distractors generation. Distractors are nothing but wrong options, which we saw earlier. Now, this can be done through three algorithms or models, SenseToVec, WordNet, and ConceptNet. This is not a pipeline or flow of the three algorithms. It is more like an option, which you would like to go ahead to, uh, to generate the distractors. And these distractors are further go, uh, uh, end up being on a MCQ questions. Right Now, let's delve into it. Now, firstly, we have the Google Bird model for extractive text summarization. Now, what is text summarization basically? If you see the small image on the left side, we have a lot of text in book, and we are trying to summarize it into a short summary while still retaining the imported information from the text. So this is nothing but text summarization in a, in a short uh, uh, line, you, can, you could say. And there are different types of summarization that is abstractive and extractive. Abstractive is nothing but, you know, we are trying to uh, rewrite the text in a way and condense it, right? We are changing the words of the text. That is abstractive. Now, extractive is something which you would take with a highlighter and highlight sentences in a piece of text. So you're picking the important sentences of the whole content. Now, that's what we are employing here. That is extractive text summarization. And to do this, we're using the Google BERT model. BERT is nothing but bidirectional encoder representation from transformers. And if you've been into the NLP industry for a while, you'd, you'd know that uh, transformers have done state-of-the-art uh, uh, results on variety of NLP tasks. And these are like the go-to models right now. And be, being served by Hugging Face, these, these are like very easy to you know deploy and run. So that's why you're using BERT model over here for text summarization. The next module was the Python key phase extraction. So what happens here is basically PK is an open source key phase extraction toolkit. It contains multiple models, which are supervised and unsupervised uh, according to whatever you want to use. You can pick from there. It's a big library. 
and what we are doing is we are using unsupervised multipartite graph key phrase extraction algorithm over here so what this does is the whole content of our document or text is sent into the uh, unsupervised model and this creates a multipartite multipartite graph unsupervised multipartite graph which actually holds the information of the whole document and also what it does is it uh, separates the topics and the sentences and uh, it uses the correlation between them to rank these results as key phrases and the result of this algorithm gives us some top n rank uh, candidates which we pick as our key phrases and these key phrases are further uh, condensed to get our keywords for our uh, distractors we'll see that later how we use them but what you need to keep in mind is that we get n top rank candidates from the model as keywords right that's what pk gives us now coming to flash text flash text is nothing but a very small library but it is very useful because it is way more faster than regex for searching and replacing so the major use of fast uh, flash text is for uh, word replacement and for word searching now if you see the graphs here is the uh, graph of word text uh, flash text versus regex on the searching criteria you see how it increases with the number of terms the time is more for regex but for flash text it takes very less time similarly in replacing words that's what that's why we using it and the reason why it's fast is it, it uses try data structure if you uh, if you're into data structure algorithms you might have heard about try it's a very efficient data structure to access uh, 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 text data right it's also used in uh, uh, you know mobile uh, uh, contacts app something like that so that's why we're using it uh, so because it gives us faster uh, faster efficiency to access our data and uh, next coming to the main piece that is generating distractors i want you to pay attention here our keyword here is rose the flower okay now what we are trying to do is there is a concept called hypername and home hyponyms in english okay so the hyponym of rose is flower so basically you can take this as a hierarchy okay so the hyponym of rose is flower once we are at the hyponym we can go to the home hyponyms of flower now which is orchid jasmine tulip and other flowers so the concept here is from our keyword we go to one step above to the hyponym and then we comes one step down to the hyponym so this gives us options uh, you know these could be our uh, possible options for distractors and this is what is used in wordnet now what is wordnet wordnet is nothing but an open source lexical database of english so this is human annotated and it holds a lot of relationship and data about the english key english words right and it's somewhat like a thesaurus you could say but it also captures the semantics and relations between words okay and wordnet also captures the different meanings or synset of a word this is an important point and we'll come to this for example mouse could be the animal mouse and the computer mouse now wordnet holds the information that which word is it and this meaning is called a synset okay now coming to this snippet from collab where i'm trying to use wordnet on the word red okay so if you see uh when i am entering the word red and we go to the hypernym we get as chromatic color because red is a color that's what we got now we using the hypernym which we got when we try to go to the hyponym that is a level below we try to get other colors green olive orange and you can see these could be the distractors for the color red so that's how we are using wordnet and this is one of the three algorithms which you, which you can use and there are others which we can check out right now okay now before we do that in wordnet itself we need to understand words and disambiguation and for that you can consider these two sentences i went to the bank to withdraw money and heavy rains overflowed the river bank now you see the word bank is same in both the sentences but the meaning is completely different and that is why we need word sense disambiguation so that we can differ the meaning and the model can understand which context is the word being used in right now for that we are using pywsd that is python implementation of word sense disambiguation library now there are multiple algorithms over there to handle such problems we are using max similarity and rapid lesc what max similarity algorithm does is uh, as i said since it is the sense of a word so max similarity tries to maximize the sensets of all the words in the sentence and compare it with the ambig ambiguous words sense that is bank and by maximizing the similarity we get to know which context this could rely on and that is how we disambiguate the meaning right now coming to concept net this is an, uh, apart from word net this is not a flow this is more like an option as i told you concept net is a human annotated multilingual knowledge graph the point to be noted here is word net is only in english but concept net is multilingual so it 
has a large uh, database okay now it was originated in uh, uh, 1999 in the mit media lab and concept net labels the semantic relationship among, among words but they are more detailed compared to word net now there are multiple relationships held in concept net for a word which the the relationships could be is a part of similar to kind of relationships you could better understand with this example on the right side uh, you could you can check check out concept net on conceptnet.io this is their website and it is uh, you can just type in any word and see the relations it holds now i tried with entering the word color if you see the related terms are blue paint red blue green and the types of color are also given these are just couple of them there are more than like uh, 10 relations i think you know for example if you take united states california is a part of united states texas is a part of united this is a part of is the kind of relationship which is held over there so you could utilize these different relations in order to uh, get distractors for your keywords right and how we can use this concept net provides an api for public use which has an early usage capacity so it's not really great for production deployments i'm not sure if they have a paid one available but there is a limitation to it but it helps a lot of knowledge more than wordnet that's why this is better now third one is sense to vec sense to vec is different from wordnet and conceptnet in a way that this is not human annotated first thing these are more like word vectors something what ramsha was referring to earlier right so sense to vec generates vector space representation of words right sense to vec creates embedding for sentences rather than tokens of words so we have embeddings for the senses not the words so the uh, the benefit of using sense to vec is for example if you consider the word apple apple could be the you know the company apple and the apple could also be the uh, fruit apple so similarly to address this we have two different vectors in sense to vec so that the model can completely understand the difference and we don't have the word sense disambiguation issue over here there's a company called explosion.ai which has trained a uh, sense to vec model on reddit comments from 2015 and 20, 2019 and these models are publicly available to download and they have also served a simple api over at explosion.ai now for example on the right side if i write machine learning the most correlated uh, topics are data science natural language processing and others you can see and the percentage of confidence is also given so this is very useful again to generate the distractors right now i'll show you a quick demo with streamlit i'm not sure if you have heard about the library this is the, uh, this is the window where i'm serving locally the mcq generation using nlp project and this is the content i'm passing into we saw the same content in the initial slide right asia and i'll just run this and until this runs i'll like to show you uh, how you can use uh, streamlit to serve your ml models locally within around 15 to 16 lines of code here i'm just importing the streamlit library and i'm giving a title to the page i'm i, I mind you i have not written any html over here right this is the only code to serve it on the browser and here i have created a text area where i just entered the sentence right and once the sentence is entered i'm calling my uh, function to generate the mcqs and i'm just writing whatever response i got so you see within 15 lines of code we have created a complete web page with input and output so it is very easy to you know quickly check your model and you know just show it to the uh, your, your boss or you know a business decision maker you can also share link to the model so i just wanted to stream it because it's very nice now let's see uh, our results are here right i entered this piece of text and here is the question which we saw dash is separated from europe by ural mountains asia and the options are latin america philippines south america these options look good right and there's another one here and the options again are pretty similar to europe europe is the correct answer and the other options which are good distractors so similarly we have others but yeah i guess you get the point and i think uh, that's about the demo and thank you a lot for giving me the opportunity and joining us here and you can feel free to get connected on my social media handles and i'm pretty active on linkedin and if you have any other questions you can shoot a mail at uh, hardiknata@spector.tech